Daniel, could you describe the Z degree and its place on your campus and how it came to be? So at Tidewater Community College, a Z degree is a degree that's designed solely with open educational resources, replacing traditional textbooks. We launched the Z degree with our associate science degree in business administration. And we chose that degree because it has our second highest number of enrollments of all of our programs. It's offered at all of the campus locations and it's offered in all delivery modes. So it was a natural place for us to begin. And our faculty champion on the Z degree happens to teach in the business degree. One thing that's uh, of interest to us about the Z degree is that you've created a policy framework when specifically open policies in your institution to support open activity. Can you tell us how you came to recognize the importance of having a framework like that to implement the degree? Prior to August of 2012, um, we knew very little about open, edu open educational resources at Tidewater. And so as I began to engage faculty in the conversation, um, we came to the point of needing a policy through the dialogue with the faculty team. That team wanted some reassurance. If they were going to step out on a limb, set aside their traditional textbooks and try this OER thing, they had no idea what that was going to mean in terms of the relationships with the bookstore, publishers, with their own colleagues, the role of copyright in, in that conversation. They had no idea what that was going to mean. So they wanted some reassurance, and they wanted it from the president and myself. Mm -hmm. And so it became obvious to us that the best way to show our support was with a policy. And that began the policy conversation. How did you initiate that conversation? Who were the stakeholders, and how did you uh, engage them in the practice of policy development? The policy that we have in place now was developed in two phases. In that first phase, not knowing much about OER, basically had two key elements. We had a clear purpose statement, and then it basically said that we would comply with the intellectual property policy of the Virginia Community College system. It didn't go much beyond that because we didn't have the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we gained experience, the policy began to take shape. Uh, it, it mirrored, the policy development itself mirrored our experience as we began to deepen our knowledge of what OER was. And so by the end of the first year of our two-year pilot, we had enough experience that what you see in policy today uh, is, is where we stand with, uh, with what, what we have in our OER policy. The, the, uh, the faculty team, we had a 13-member faculty team, they essentially helped shape it based on their experience. Uh, we formed during that first pilot year an OER advisory committee. Uh, once the team and I drafted the policy, the framework of it, uh, the OER committee, the advisory committee, looked at the policy, gave us some additional feedback. And then in time it went to, uh, it went to our president and her executive team for review and approval. Has the the policy framework you developed for the Z degree had impact on your campus outside the Z degree? Has, there, has it affected the culture of your institution in any, any describable ways? What we have done with the Z degree is just beginning to change the conversation in two key ways for us at Tidewater. One is, um, you know, we're not talking about textbooks as much anymore. We're more focused on course and program outcomes. That's the right conversation. That's really where we need to be, I think, uh, in terms of teaching and learning and the conversations that, that we need to be having. And so that's a key change that's, that's coming. The second one is in the way we design courses. The way we design the OER courses is not like anything we've done in the past. So when faculty selected the OER that they were using in their course, the standard is, is the OER needs to align with the outcomes in the course. So there's a match between the resource that's used and each of the outcomes. That design, we think, is paying dividends in terms of what we're seeing with student performance. So will that discussion about design and delivery drive the implementation of policy campus-wide, or is it, is it the other way around? Will the policy help support OER implementation across campus? Probably works both ways. In our policy, there are three core elements. There's a purpose statement there's the policy statement, and then there's the procedures. In the purpose statement, we have been clear from the beginning. We set out to achieve two outcomes. First, to improve student success, and we do that by eliminating textbooks as a barrier for their enrollment. And then second, to improve teaching and learning. 
uh, by providing faculty the ability with OER to augment, remix, uh, do what they need to do to match that OER directly with the outcomes. And they can do that almost on demand. And so the policy statement has been clear from the beginning, improve student success, improve teaching. I'm, I'm sorry, the purpose statement. The policy, uh, the policy is also key in what we say in, in it. Uh, the policy says that for a fact member who's gonna teach with OER, that is their responsibility ultimately to make sure that the integrity of that course is intact and they are responsible for making sure that the copyright, that they're in compliance with copyright. There's a second piece. In order for a course to, be, to carry a Z designation, there's a more rigorous standard in the policy and you see that in the procedures. And the reason we draw that distinction in policy is we did not want to discourage faculty use of OER by focusing solely on the Z designation. So we leave it open for the use of OER, and we set the Z designation as sort of the gold standard within the policy. When we get into the procedures, there, right now there are roughly 10 elements in the procedures. Uh, it speaks to faculty training and professional development. And so, for example, if a faculty member is going to teach with OER, we have, a, we have a course, it's called OER Pathways, a six-module course that did not exist before we started the project. We created this course with the help of the system office and some grant funding. If a faculty member is going to teach with OER, they're not required to take the course, but we encourage them to take it. If they're going to teach a Z course, they have to complete the course successfully before they can teach a Z course, and, they carry, and the course will carry that designation. Other components include quality standards for OER, uh, support, and that comes primarily from the librarians and now our instruction designers, licensing of original content, uh, Z course instructor qualifications, uh, course modifications, publication of Z courses, authorization for Z course creation, and then another key element in our policy and procedures is continuous improvement. You know, so for now, those are the key elements in our policy, and it will continue to evolve as we gain more experience and learn from others. What do you think the open community at large can do to support uh, institutional policy development strategies for open educational resources? I think they could help, like we are here producing video to get the word out. Uh, and there are lots of other things I think we can do. I think there's enough written about OER policy in general. Uh, there's a fair amount out there on legislation, but not on institutional policy like we have at Tidewater. I don't see enough leaders engaged in the conversation. Uh, I see deans and I see faculty. I don't see a lot of vice presidents or presidents engaged in conversation. That's beginning to change in Virginia. Our president or the chancellor has set a standard and is requiring the presidents to engage in the conversation on textbook cost. And there are various ways that we're tackling that issue. Uh, but there needs to be more I think leaders engaged, faculty awareness continues to be an issue. Although at Tidewater, uh, there's sort of this quiet revolution occurring. You know, our faculty have, uh, have not been happy with the cost of textbooks for a long time. And so for many of them, this provides an outlet to address the textbook issue. And they've quickly jumped on board. We've trained about 100 faculty through OER Pathways. I feel like a lot of administrators at community colleges would find the idea that faculty drove the policy discussion almost counterintuitive. So I think that's a, that's a great thing to highlight here. And actually in Washington, we've had a similar experience that our faculty are asking for more policy development at the department and institutional level. Um, and that's great information, Daniel. Thank you. I'll give you one more example on the policy and how important it was to have faculty involved in writing it. We did not go into this project with the notion that the content would be shared. Um, I was concerned if we, if we went in with that as the purpose, it might be difficult getting it off the ground. As we gained experience, the faculty came to the conclusion, this 13-member team, uh, that the best way or the, the way to ease into sharing the content was through our continuous improvement process that's in the policy. And what it says is, once a course has gone through two reviews of continuous improvement, at that point, the faculty are required to publish the content. And they were, they, that was their recommendation. They did not want to put out a course uh, in the public domain that they did not feel comfortable was ready for for public consumption. And so by saying in policy there's time for two reviews, 
and give them enough feedback that they can make adjustments in that course. That provided a level of comfort that the conversation on open uh, was, was easier to approach after we had some experience under our belt and moved into the second year of our pilot. Daniel, what's the impact of the Z degree and the associated policy framework been at Tidewater? The, the, the policy has been central to the progress that we've made. The impact has been remarkable in many ways. For students, in pilot mode, we had 2,500 who successfully completed a Z course. And collectively, we've calculated that they saved roughly $250,000 in textbook cost. Uh, some faculty are beginning to report, now that we're out of pilot mode, that there are students in non-Z sections who are dropping courses to move into Z sections, even if that means they have to go to another campus because there's no textbook cost. Uh, that's also a sign, I think, that the policy and the effort is, is having the impact. Librarians. You know, our librarians are now a major resource in our OER uh, effort with a Z degree, and that's acknowledged in policy along with our instruction designers. Uh, I mentioned it's changing the conversation. We've had uh, very strong support from our system office, uh, supporting everything we've done with a Z degree to the point where they now have, uh, they now have a grant funded project to replicate what we've done across the Virginia Community College system. And I believe there are 16 colleges that are working on a number of degrees to repeat what we have done with a Z degree at Tidewater. So the impact has been enormous. It's drawn a fair amount of national attention, although that's not why we, we got into this. Uh, it goes beyond, the impact goes beyond, uh, beyond Tidewater and continues. Well, thanks a lot, Daniel. I think that's great information and appreciate it hearing it directly from you.